And welcome to the fourth video in our series on writing a simple compiler for BF.NET using C Sharp. In our last video, we actually generated some C Sharp code by looking at each of the instructions in our language in turn and then just emitting the corresponding code. And then that generated a standalone program which could be ran. However, currently we've hard coded the instructions we're compiling and also the parse we're going to generate the files too. So in this video, we're going to tidy this up a bit. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new folder called samples where we can put some of our source code. And then here we'll create a new file called hello world. And we'll place into that our sample application. And um, we can use our file extension um, BF. So we just take the path to that. So what we're going to do is when we run our compiler, we're going to pass this in as the first argument, the path to the file. So for debugging purposes, we're just going to hard code that. Like so. So. So the first argument is going to be the source code source file source code file. Yes. And obviously, if we don't have any arguments, it's an error. So if not, I'll stop any. Um, we can probably have a couple more checks as well actually. We can also check that the file exists. And then instead of having our instructions hard coded, we can now just read them straight from the source code file. Oops, we don't actually. So what we're gonna do is I think is we'll create we want to generate the file in this folder, but maybe in a subfolder in here. So if we create a subfolder called Hello World, and then we can compile our program into that. So we need to work out a few paths. So first of all, we probably want to know the parent folder. Which is simply that. And then our project name is, because our language can only ever have a single source file, because we can't have functions and so on, so we can just take the name of the file to be the project name. That'd be file name without the uh, .bf extension. So then our project folder will just be our current folder, and then have a subfolder in there with the name of the project file, with the name of the project, and we can create that. Okay, so now we've got some paths to use. So down here, when we're generating our program, we're going to put that into our project folder. Like so, and then the project file itself will also be in that folder, but with a different name. So we can that's still going to be SES proj file, but now it's going to be the name of the program. So project name. So 
So that's now going to eliminate the files in the right place. That's our project file, that's the header. So, we're, ah, so we can probably change the, the um, namespace to the project name. No, I don't think it really matters. Just do some simple for a second. So that's project name. So if we run this now, hopefully it should read in the program from the command line and generate the files in the subfolder. Let's create our subfolder. Let's create our files. So the next thing is we want it to automatically compile our C sharp code. And we can do that by just shelling out to .NET run. So the easiest way to run files is by using the process class. So we just run that code. So that's in the system diagnostics namespace. The new syntax we're using, so we don't need the braces. We need to bring in that namespace. So the program we're going to run is going to just be .NET, and then we need to set some arguments. So our arguments are going to be so we need to build, and then we need the file we're going to build, which is this thing. Probably want to set that by speech marks as well, in case there's a space in the path. I'll put these back to front. Nope. So this time it should attempt to compile our application. It's looking good. So yes, it's generated our hello world. And that bumps hello world. So we could probably try another example. Um, we do it. Okay. Yes. Um, so, so if we call from our program, we can read input from the console using comma. So what we could do is we could read in uh, the input and then just print it out five times. So this time we run echo instead. Why didn't that work? Oh, I think it did. Maybe I didn't save the project file before. Let's do that our echo program. So if we do the letter D, for example, for David, then it out lots of times. So that's working as well. So in this video, we've um, improved our C-sharp compiler by removing the hard coded program and making it sort of um, driven by a command line argument with the source code. 
So in the next video, we can tidy that and then automatically generate the uh, executable. So in the next video, we can tidy this up a bit more and actually start optimizing the C sharp we generate. And maybe we can remove some of these hard coded um, files as well. Thank you for watching.